You probably wouldn't imagine open mics to be a controversial topic, but honestly, this may be one of the most controversial topics I've covered in a video. People have some very big opinions about them. Da -da -da -da. Hi guys, it's Emma, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, then welcome to the chaos. I do all things music related on this channel. Usually that involves stuff like putting up covers and show reels to show people what I'm like as a performer, or doing songwriting and production style content. But every now and then it involves just literally talking about what life is like as a working musician, sharing tips and advice, and just generally talking about certain topics. And today, I really wanted to make a video about open mics. I have been to a lot of open mics in my time. You know, not that I've been around that long, but... And I noticed that there are a few different opinions that musicians hold about open mics. And a lot of people actually are of the opinion that there is no point to an open mic and that open mics are actually just there to rip off musicians. Like with any industry, there are people who are just in it to try and rip off the other people in it. And a lot of musicians have experience with promoters and venues that don't necessarily act in the most moral, respectful of ways when it comes to musicians. You know, the classic, people will talk about this a lot, how you can't pay us in exposure and how the creative fields are often the ones that are expected to do work for people for exposure. You would never ask a bricklayer to do bricklaying for you and not pay them for it. However, you will sometimes get a discount off that kind of work if you allow them to put a sign up advertising that they were the ones who did that service on your house. So you can pay a little bit in exposure, but it is a thing that in the arts, people try to not pay artists of all kinds for their work very frequently. And open mics are something that gets brought up in this topic quite a bit. Partially because a lot of people either view them as something that gets in the way for gigging musicians who make their money by doing the gig circuit. They view when an, a venue like that puts on an open mic as it being something that they do to take away from paying for live performances. There is definitely a case of times when I think that venues have put on an open mic as a way to try and get more entertainment throughout the evening than they would if they just paid someone to play. But it doesn't make sense when people act like they get the entertainment completely for free, because if they are not putting on the open mic themselves, like if it's not someone who works for the bar already, who is organizing the open mic, doing the sound, getting the acts in, then someone's getting paid to do that. They will likely be getting paid less than an actual musician would get paid a lot of the time. They will get artists to play for longer because of that. Because if you have multiple artists coming down to an open mic, all doing a 15 minute slot each, starting at seven, ending at 11 o'clock or even midnight, I've known ones to go really late before, then that is, you know, longer than a musician would play for. So it is true that an open mic can get a bar more entertainment for less money and that the actual performers themselves often aren't paid from open mic. You usually get paid in a free drink which if you're like me and you don't drink alcohol is often not worth it. And you always have to claim the free drink after you've played so if you play really late into the evening you don't really get your free drink. But the truth is most of the venues I've been aware of that run an open mic also have gigs on. There are a few different types of gigs and honestly and this may be the most controversial statement I'll make. A lot of people will not agree with this. I know this from the way that local musicians like to act, but an open mic is not a gig. Once it gets to proper gig territory, you're either selling tickets or I am there to entertain the punters, in which case I am a paid worker for the night. But yeah, as I was saying, open mics are not gigs. Depending on what type of musician you are, you're gonna be looking to get different things out of open mics. Now, I am of the opinion that open mics are not worthless and that they are not taking away from gigs when they are run correctly. I will agree that there are sometimes occasions when a venue will put on an open mic, like I said before, to try and get longer amount of entertainment for less money. And those sorts of open mics, in my experience, don't last very long because the musicians that attend them don't get anything out of them, so they stop attending them. And anytime you're relying on people to provide free labor for a service to continue happening, and you're not respecting the people giving that free labor, eventually they're gonna stop giving that free labor. So the way I see it, there are three types of musicians on any local music scene. There are your pros, your semi-pros, and your hobbyists. Your pros 
are your full time, make all their money out of music or something music related. Vast majority of time, a pro is going to make a lot of money in the gig circuit in general, or they will run a recording studio, they might be a promoter. Your semi pro is somebody who has another job and that is their main income, but they do make a little bit of money out of music. They maybe release their own music and take it seriously, not just put something up on Spotify and hope people will listen to it. Or or they might be somebody who, you know, as a side hustle, they do gigs on the weekend, do a little bit of mixing here and there, a little bit of recording, all the same stuff as your pro, just they do it in a smaller amount and it is not their main income. So it's not as important to them that they're getting paid for their work all the time. The third type is the hobbyist. The hobbyist does not get paid for their work. Maybe they make a little bit in streams because they've got a couple of songs on Spotify. Maybe they've done one or two paid gigs this year. Most of them are not getting paid at all for anything to do with music. They only do music for the love of it. Depending on which group you fit into, you're gonna look for different things for an open mic and you might not bother with open mics at all. If you make all of your income pretty much off gigging, you know, and you already have a customer base, like you are booked up, why would you go to an open mic unless you had something else that you were looking to get out of it? If you don't have your own original music to promote or you're not looking for like a musical outlet just for the fun of it, then there is no point to you going to an open mic. A pro who's starting out will get something from an open mic in a way that a pro who is already a pro might not. And that's because as I see it, there are five things that you should be looking to get from an open mic. You want an open mic to give you one or more, preferably more than one, but at least one of these five things. If it does not provide one of these five things, it is not a good open mic and you should not go back. Or it's maybe an early day's open mic and it needs work it. So if you are looking at running an open mic yourself, think about these five things. They are what are gonna make your open mic actually last and people show up to it. Number one, they provide an opportunity for young musicians who are just starting out, whether it's a musician who's looking to be a gigging musician on the circuit and make money playing covers in pubs and clubs and stuff, or a young musician looking to try and get their own original music out there. They give you your first opportunities performing. And they also provide more established musicians with the opportunity to try out new things, new songs, new covers, a new show you're putting together, Together. An open mic is basically a free stage for you to do with as you please, including an audience who can help critique whatever it is you're doing. It's a stress-free, no pressure, you aren't getting paid, expectations aren't that high, it's just an open mic. And that's why it's perfect for getting those first tries at stuff. Number two, an opportunity to get content, you know, photos, videos and such. Both the open mic actually offering this themselves by if you know the person who runs the open mic also does photography and videography they will often record and take photos of the sets this is great love this sometimes they'll do a recording through the desk as well you can get an audio recording these are all pieces of media that you can use social media is massively important to pretty much every type of musician out there from your covers artists through to your i'm trying to promote my own original music and become the next big thing everybody needs social media content and open mics provide easy social media content because if nothing else you can have your friend take some videos and some photos in the audience that's something to post on all the different socials this is something you can offer if you have those skills and you're looking to run an open mic that will make people actually want to go to your open mic just saying number three exposure. There are certain open mics that are big enough and well known enough and have a reputation that music lovers will go to. And especially if you're in places like London, there are certain open mics that have a big reputation and people will go to just sit in the audience and watch the performers and find the next artist that they're gonna love. And the kinds of music lovers that attend random open mics in hopes of finding cool musicians are the kind that if they like what you do, they are going to buy your stuff. You're not gonna find a massive fan base just by playing open mics, but you'll get a few committed fans who can be that start to get the ball rolling, to get you a little bit of money coming in from stuff. You know, they'll buy your little pieces of merch. They'll subscribe to your buy me a coffee. Number four, 
an opportunity to network with other musicians and other music adjacent peoples. Networking with other musicians is really important. Other musicians are the most likely place that you will find gig opportunities, that you will find other people to work with, that you will get good, reliable feedback on local recording studios to know which ones are worthwhile. You may even meet somebody who runs a recording studio and if you become buddy-buddy with them, they'll give you mates rates. So now you can get recordings done cheaper. Other musicians to meet up with and jam with and write with. Other musicians who are also looking to try and make money in this business, who when they start getting opportunities, if they know you and they know you're good and they like you and they need someone to do guitar on some track they're working on, they don't play it, you might be the person they ask because of that. Because a lot of musicians in a variety of different roles in the industry will go to open mics as a way to sort of let their hair down and socialize in a less high pressure environment. It's not like some big formal event organized by the musicians union or something like that. You know, it's just a chilled out local open mic. And you'll meet people who might not be anybody now, but they might be somebody further down the line who knowing them is good. I've gotten gigs from open mics, I've gotten free and cheap recordings done by people that I met at open mics. I met my duo buddy. Would you call it an open mic? At a small gig like this. And number five, this is the one that I think a lot of musicians forget about the most. Open mics aren't just for those of us who make money out of music. There is a whole subsection of people called the hobbyists who don't make money out of music, but they're still allowed to play and they're allowed to perform. You have to allow for the existence of open mics that are not there for the purpose of marketing music. Open mics that are there solely for the benefit of the local community. Number five is community. That's what open mics give, both to the music scene and to just the local community in general. Open mics are crucial to building good music communities. But they are also crucial even if they are just the local open mic in some small pub. There is an open mic that I still try to get out to when I can. I don't get out to it as much as I used to, and I wish I did because I love playing it, not because I get great exposure there. Although I have actually gotten a couple of gigs out of knowing the people who run this open mic. So, you know, there's that. I kind of networked at this open mic a little bit. But the main reason I kept going back to it and why I enjoy going to it is because it's nice to just be around people who live around where I live, who love music, just playing music for the love of it. It's nice to just sit and enjoy music with other human beings. That was, you know, the point to begin with. And open mics are essential for that. There is no other form of gig or performance opportunity out there that provides the same sense of just community vibes as the small local open mic does. And they're there not just for us musicians who get paid for our work, they're there for the guy who decided to learn guitar in his 60s. He gets to play. They're there for the person who used to gig regularly but doesn't really want to do it and get paid for it anymore, but they want to get back out performing again. They're there for the guy who doesn't play any instruments, he just likes to come down and listen and enjoy and dance along with the music. These are the five things that open mics should offer. They don't have to offer all of them. And I would argue that quite often there are a lot that only offer community and that is fine. It doesn't necessarily make it an open mic that you, if you are looking to make money and get and promote your own original music, you don't wanna go to the local open mic that is just for community every weekend. But that doesn't make it a crap open mic that doesn't offer other people anything, it just didn't offer anything to you. You have to decide what you want to get out of going to open mics. Which one are you looking for? Are you just looking for community? Are you looking to network with other musicians? Are you looking to get content for something? And pick which open mic you're going to do based on that. And if you are looking to run an open mic or you currently run an open mic and it's not doing so well, but you are committed, like you're, you're not like just hoping it will be an easy piece of income for you, you're actually committed to running a good open mic. Think about these five things and which one do you want your open mic to offer? Which one could it offer? Because not all open mics and all venues can offer all five of these things. You know, if you don't have a really good desk or a really good lighting or a really good camera or somebody who can do all those skills, then you can't really offer to film content for people, can you? And if you're a small local venue, then you're probably not gonna offer the same exposure that something in the center of, of, of a city is going to offer. 
but think about what your open mic can offer, what you want it to offer, and then market your open mic like that. Approach musicians with that in mind. Put in place the systems you need to make that open mic offer that thing. I just wanted to rant about open mics. I love open mics. I got out of the habit of going to them because of the pandemic, you know, with everything shutting down. And then when everything opened up again, I just took me ages to get back into the habit of going to them. And I've been trying more this year to get out to more open mics. I say, I'm saying this year because I'm recording this back before the new year. <laughs> I tried last year to get out to more open mics again. I made a really big effort to do it. And I was really glad I did because it got me back in touch with my local scene more. I hope you enjoyed this video and it maybe gave you a different perspective, something to think about, maybe even some advice and some tips you might follow if you are a musician looking to start doing some open mics and gigs and stuff or someone running an open mic. Either way, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then maybe you want to hit that subscribe button because I put out content like this on a regular basis. But I know that that is a big commitment to make to hit that subscribe button because you can't undo it once you've done it. It's rude. So if you would like to peruse a few more videos on this channel before making that decision, there'll be one popping up right now on this end screen here. If you'd like to know when you can catch me at an open mic, then you can follow me on all my socials below. And obviously there will be a, there will be quite a sizable outtakes video for my buy me a coffee people from this one I think because I rambled a bit in the middle there so look forward to that and if you haven't heard about my buy me a coffee that is linked in the description below and it's basically kind of like a patreon if you want to check that out that's everything guys I shall see you next week with another video Bye.